ready to hit the dance floor. I am, let's do it. Because today we're diving deep into Madonna's iconic album, Confessions on a Dance Floor. We're serving up pure, joyous dance pop energy. Love it. And trust me, there's so much more to this album than just Hung Up, though we'll definitely be getting to that. You're so right. While Hung Up was huge GE, mm -hmm. I think what makes this album so special is how it all fits together, the way she put it all together. Yeah. 2005, releasing an album designed to be this continuous DJ set. Right. That was kind of radical. It really was innovative. It's like she created this sonic journey for the listener right. with each track flowing seamlessly into the next. Definitely. Speaking of journeys, I went down a little bit of a Reddit rabbit hole on this album. Oh, nice. And let me tell you, the nostalgia is real. Oh, I bet. I mean, it's been almost two decades since Confessions came out. I know. It makes sense that it's basically soundtracking a lot of people's lives at this point. Totally. One listener even said they picture their dad blasting the album while they played GameCube back in the day. Oh. It's like this instant time machine back to 2005. That's the beauty of music though, right? It can yeah. just take you back to that exact moment. Yes. But what I find so fascinating about Confessions is that it wasn't just drawing on nostalgia. Okay. It was also shaping the future of pop music. I see where you're going with this. The continuous DJ set format, the way it blends those classic disco vibes with modern electronic sounds. Right. It's like she predicted the rise of EDM and playlist culture. Exactly. In 2005, we were all still thinking about albums as like collections of individual songs. Yes. But Confessions invited you to experience it as this complete work, this whole sonic experience. And now look. And that approach, it's everywhere now in the age of streaming and curated playlists. Totally. It's like Madonna has the sixth sense for where music is headed. Right. But this album wasn't just about groundbreaking sounds. You know, it was also surprisingly personal. Yeah. We found this fantastic interview from Attitude magazine, published right around when the album came out. Yeah. And it offers this really interesting glimpse into Madonna's headspace at the time. Oh, it's so revealing, especially when she talks about recording the album in that tiny London loft. Right. Talk about a contrast, this global superstar tucked away in a small studio creating these massive dance anthems Me. shows that even with all the fame and success, at her core, she's an artist drawn to the creative process itself. And that really comes through in the music, I think. It's joyful, it's energetic, but there's also this like undercurrent of introspection, this willingness to reflect on her life and her career. Yeah. And you can definitely hear that in the lyrics, like in How High, where she sings, if it's not love, then what is it? Because this feeling's got me questioning. Right. She's grappling with the price of fame, the sacrifices she's made, but she's doing it over these infectious dance beats. Exactly. It's like she's inviting us all to dance alongside her as she works through all these really complex emotions. And that vulnerability, that willingness to be open about her struggles, it makes the album so relatable. Oh, for sure. But it's not all introspection and deep thoughts. There are definitely moments of classic Madonna humor sprinkled throughout the album and that attitude interview. Oh, yeah. Like when she talks about her dad becoming buddies with Michael Moore. I love that. It's such a funny, unexpected detail. It reminds us that even global icons have these totally relatable family dynamics. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a Donna, but I'm also a daughter. Yeah. I'm a friend, I'm a human, I have a quirky family. Yeah. It's those little glimpses into her personal life that make confessions. Yeah. So fascinating. Absolutely. Like she's giving us a peek behind the curtain, reminding us that there's a real person behind the icon. Yeah. But let's talk about the music itself for a minute, because beyond those catchy hooks and infectious beats, there are some really interesting things happening musically on this album. Oh, absolutely. And speaking of interesting, we have to talk about Isaac. Oh yeah, the Reddit threads were buzzing about this one. It's not surprising. <laughs> Isaac is a perfect example of how Madonna blends genres and pushes boundaries on this album. Right. You've got those driving dance beats, but then she layers in traditional Yemenite chanting, creating this incredibly rich and evocative soundscape. It's hypnotic. But it also sparked some controversy back in the day, right? Yeah, I remember reading about religious groups accusing her of blasphemy because of the song. Yeah, there was definitely some backlash, which is something that Madonna's never shied away from throughout her career. True. But what's important to remember is that the song is actually named after Yitzhak Sinwani, the Yemenite singer featured on the track. And Madonna has said that the lyrics were inspired by an ancient Hebrew text about finding solace in faith. 
Right. She actually addressed the controversy head on in that Attitude interview we mentioned earlier, saying that the song is about finding strength and comfort in your beliefs, whatever they may be. Exactly. It's a great example of how she uses her platform to challenge preconceptions and spark conversations about important issues. Yeah. But it also highlights how even of the fun, dance floor ready album like Confessions, mm -hmm. Madonna isn't afraid to tackle complex themes and encourage her listeners to think a little deeper. Absolutely. And speaking of sparking conversations, I have to bring up Forbidden Love. Oh yeah. It's not a single, but it's one of those deep cuts that really seems to resonate with fans. What do you think is about that song that makes it so captivating? I think it's the combination of that pulsating hypnotic beat and those incredibly suggestive lyrics. It's like she's creating this atmosphere of longing and desire, but there's also an element of danger, of crossing boundaries that you're not supposed to cross. It's seductive, it's a little bit dangerous, and it's incredibly effective. It's definitely one of those songs that gets stuck in your head. Right. But you know what else is amazing about this album? The fact that she wrote Hung Up, which went on to become one of your biggest hits ever, in just 10 minutes. I know. 10 minutes. It's mind-blowing to think that a song that iconic with that level of global impact came together so quickly. It just goes to show that sometimes inspiration strikes at the most unexpected moments. And when it does, you better be ready to capture it. Uh, but Confessions wasn't just about individual songs, it was about the album as a whole, this cohesive statement from start to finish. Absolutely. And that's something that often gets overlooked in the age of streaming, where it's yeah. so easy to just jump around from song to song. You're right. But... With Confessions, Madonna created an experience that was meant to be listened to from beginning to end, like one long, exhilarating dance party. And she even took that party on the road with her Confessions tour, which was this spectacular, visually stunning show that perfectly captured the energy and spirit of the album. It was epic. Oh, yeah. From the dazzling costumes to the intricate choreography to the sheer athleticism of Madonna's performance, it was a testament to her artistry and her ability to create a truly immersive experience for her fans. Speaking of her fans, remember that listener who mentioned listening to Confessions? while playing GameCube. Yeah. They also wondered if the album's success, that infectious joy, might have been connected to Madonna's personal life at the time. She was married to Guy Ritchie, and they seemed happy. It's an interesting thought, isn't it? It is. Whether her personal happiness at the time directly influenced the music is up for debate. But there's no denying that Confessions is an album full of light, love, and pure, unadulterated joy. And that joy is contagious. It's impossible to listen to this album without feeling a little bit lighter, a little bit more free. Exactly. It's a reminder to let go of your inhibitions, embrace your sensuality, and just dance like nobody's watching. And maybe wear some pink leotards while you're at it. Why not? Little bit of 80s workout chic never hurt anyone. You're right. But in all seriousness, Confessions on a Dance Floor is more than just a collection of catchy songs. It's a cultural touchstone a testament to Madonna's enduring influence, and a reminder that music has the power to transport us, transform us, and connect us in ways that nothing else can. Beautifully said. And, you know, I think that's a great place to leave it for now. Yeah, for now. Okay, we are back and still grooving to the legacy of Madonna's Confessions on a Dance Floor. Before we went away, we were talking about how joyful this album is. Yeah. That freedom that you just feel like radiating off of it. It just gets you. And how it connects to something, you know, universal. You know, it's interesting that you say that because Confessions came at such a fascinating point, I think, in her career. Oh, interesting. She had already proven herself as like a musical chameleon. Totally. Like constantly reinventing her image, her sound. Yes. But with this album, it really felt like she was, you know, coming full circle in a way. Oh, yeah. Returning to her roots on the dance floor, but still pushing those creative boundaries. Yeah, it's like she was reminding the world, maybe even herself, right. that music and dance are at her very core. They are. You know, she did it with this incredible sense of confidence and self-awareness. Nice. Like she was saying, this is me, take it or leave it. Yes. But either way, I'm gonna dance. Exactly, and it clearly resonated. It did. Confessions, topped the charts all over the world. I mean, won awards. I know. Solidified her status as a true icon. Absolutely. And I think it also had a huge impact on pop music as a whole. Oh, huge. You know, it influenced all these new artists coming up who embraced 
that retro disco sound. It's really. And that just like unapologetic embrace of dance floor euphoria. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's impossible to imagine Dua Lipa's future nostalgia right. or Miley Cyrus's like little forays into disco pop without confessions on a dance floor. Oh, 100%. She really paved the way for that whole sound to come back. Totally. And it wasn't just the sound. Right. It was the attitude. Yeah. That sense of empowerment. Oh, yeah. Liberation. Yes. It's about owning your sexuality, celebrating your body. Yes. Not letting anyone tell you how to express yourself. And that message. It's timeless. It's so true. Like, it's as relevant today as yeah. it was in 2005. Totally. Maybe even more so. Maybe even more so, yeah. Go back to those Reddit comments for a second, though. Yeah. I do remember that one listener wondered if confessions might actually be, like, the pinnacle of her whole career. What a question. It's a tough one. It's so hard. It's definitely up there. Yeah. I mean, it's one of her most iconic. Oh, yeah. Influential albums. For sure. You know what's amazing about Madonna, though? Is that she never rests on her laurels. Never. She is always evolving. Always experimenting. Always pushing it. Always pushing herself creatively. That's just true. She could have easily just been like, all right, Confessions was great. <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing that. Just ride this wave. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, just keep churning out similar dance pop albums. Right. But she didn't. She did. She went on to do Hard Candy, MDNA, Rebel Heart. She did it all. She's always exploring new sounds, collaborating with a new artist. Exactly. And that's what makes her such an enduring figure in music. So true. Like, she's not afraid to take risks. Nope. She Challenge herself, keep her fans guessing. Yeah, exactly. So while, yeah, Confessions on a Dance Floor, it's undeniably a high point in her career. High point. It's just one chapter in this long and ever-evolving story. And what a story it is. I think that's the perfect note to end this on, you know? I think so, too. What a deep dive. I mean, if this doesn't make you want to go listen to Confessions on a Dance Floor, I don't know what will. I'm going to go listen to it again right now. Me too. What an album. Amazing. This has been The Deep Dive, your shortcut to being brilliantly informed. Thanks for joining us.